I'm just on my way to Mudshoot Farm, which is a really inspiring place where Londoners can go and visit farm animals, but in the city. Now, farmer Tom has given me a call because there's a rather mischievous new recruit, so he's asked me to come up and check him out to make sure that he's A-OK. -okay. Hello, sir. How you doing? How's it going, Tom? Good to nice see you, mate. See Tom has hundreds of animals in his care, but it's a newly arrived orphan rabbit that's the reason for Tom's call to Scott. We thought when the rabbit was found, I mean, he was dumped in a box just on one of the entrances to the farm, and I thought when it became apparent that he would need uh, a little bit of surgery, that Scott would be the man to phone. We'll go and see him, shall we? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Right, so here he is. Let's have a look at him. So what's the name of my patient today, Tom? Uh, he's been christened Cookie. Cookie, OK. Yep. All right. Um, see if we can get him. Yeah. This wrangling rabbits thing can actually prove quite difficult. <laughs> yeah, he's going to give us the runaround, that's for sure. Where are you, mate? In classic rabbit style, they are very difficult to catch. I don't think they are that impressed by a vet visit, and they're trying their best to escape my clutches. There he is. Come on. Oh, oh yeah, got him, got him. OK. Come here, mate. You're quick, but you're not quick enough. How's it going? Hello there, you OK? He seems bright and healthy, and as you see, he's moving. He, he's right. moving very well. Definitely quite strong and healthy. Nice teeth as well. Boy. A little feel of your tummy. OK, well, I mean, generally, physically, he's a very fine specimen, so... Have you noticed any concerning issues or physical traits you're bothered about? There is one problem that sort of got a little bit bigger. Right. Really. Um, I think he may need to be castrated. Right. Yeah. What have you been up to, sir? So once I finally get hold of Cookie and I have a look at him, clearly he's a very happy rabbit. But Tom informs me that he's been quite the naughty boy. They're just down in here. Oh, my goodness. They are so cute, aren't they? Beautiful. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that they are Cookie's kids because yes, they are. three of them look exactly. very clearly like him, don't they? Yeah. And how many babies are we looking at here? There's, There's actually nine in there. Wow. What happened was a bit of an accident. Basically, as someone was going in to feed the girls, they had let the boy out first and he quickly saw his chance. I think he was in there for only 30 seconds, a couple of minutes, something like that. So it doesn't take much time. I think if you would have blinked, you would have missed it, but there you go. Oh, dear. We definitely no, don't need no. another 30 seconds, do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need a repeat performance. New. No. So now Tom wants Scott to take Cookie back to the Richmond practice for castration surgery. Well, let us know how you get on. Well, come on then, let's go. Your favourite. <laughs> <Good ball. laughs> Ready? Sit. Good boy. Ready? Go. Come on. Come Near Brighton, Jack Russell Snugs is up to his usual tricks. Stop, 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 stop. No, no, it stop squeaking now, look. Oh, look, you've, you've done the squeak. It. You've broken it. New ball, please. Stop. <laughs> Owner Amy and partner Ryan are kept busy with the lively 13 year old. He's had two balls within 20 minutes today. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh... He's partial to the occasional stick as well, so he just <laughs> I think he just gets to a point where he just has to destroy it, so... Get it, get it. But recently, Snugs has developed a limp. He's a good boy. He just flares up. If he goes out for a long walk, he'll just... By the end of it, he'll start limping a little bit. Yeah. He's quite happy for us to touch it and look at it. The couple are good friends with Scott's vet nurse, Reagan, and she discovered the possible cause of Snugs' limp. Reagan was visiting with her dog Shiloh. We were having a little bit of a play date and we were giving him some belly rubs. She did notice a small lump on his leg. Reagan immediately suggested the couple take Snugs to see Scott up in Richmond. 
Having Reagan as a friend of ours has been quite important because Snugs can be quite nervous about the vet. So it would be really nice that if anything does happen, that he's got somebody there that he really trusts and that he's comfortable with. You're our little Snuggies, aren't you? Amy wants to do everything she can for Snugs after the elderly dog was such a special companion to her dying mum. Good boy. Mum got diagnosed with cancer and some days mum maybe didn't have the sort of feeling to go out or, you know, to be active, but having Snugs was that reason to get up and go and have a walk and he gave to her unconditional love and probably in the time that she needed it most really in her life. <laughs> Fearing the little dog may now have his own health problems, Amy has booked him in for an appointment with Scott tomorrow. Good boy. Oh. I'd hate to think that he's in any discomfort at all, so it would just be nice to know, to get to the bottom of it, really. Yay! Good boy, Snugs. Good boy. Hey, Nate. Oh, hi, Scott. What have you got for us today, then? Uh, well, I've got a very handsome Lothario, and it is me. It's him. <laughs> At the Richmond Clinic, Scott has arrived back from Mudshoot Farm with Cookie for the rabbit's castration surgery. He's managed to father some babies at Mudshoot Farm that uh, they didn't quite expect were uh, going to be running around, and uh, now we just need to put pay to his stud behaviour. Assisting Scott is vet nurse Nathan. I think this is the one all the fathers warn their girls about, isn't it? <laughs> this rabbit? Yeah. Oh, definitely. He wouldn't get past the front door of my place. Seriously. <laughs> That's it. OK. Well, let's get to work. Sorry, buddy. Oh, ouchie. I know. Ouchie, ouchie. Good boy. Yeah, all OK. Anesthetics and rabbits can be quite fraught because they're quite nervous, stressful animals. And they're also quite delicate as well. Is it moving the bag? It's just his colour's not great. Just moments into the procedure, Scott is concerned about Cookie's breathing. Can you just be quiet for a second? That's a breath. Bless you. Go, that, that, that's moving, so... That's yeah, he's breathing. Yeah, actually his colour's improving now. It just pushed it back a little bit further. This is an early scare that I don't need. Cookie's breathing seems a little bit irregular. If you want to take him through and then I'll get scrubbed up. But now, hopefully, it's stabilised. OK. So just looking at his colour, it's gone a bit perfect. But seconds later, Cookie is in trouble again. Running into the surgery room, I can see that Cookie is blue and he is simply not breathing. This colour's awful. Extend his neck. We set to work straight away, trying to stimulate him to start breathing again. Can you see breath there? His heart's still going. Yeah, heart's still going. Breath. Uh. His heart's still going. Yeah, heart's still going. Breath. Uh. At the Richmond Clinic, Scott is doing everything he can to resuscitate Cookie. The rabbit has stopped breathing just minutes after being anaesthetised. Yeah, hurry's come up. Seeing the cookie isn't breathing and that he's going blue, it's very, very nerve-wracking. These are very stressful and nervous animals and they are prone to anaesthetic reactions, basically, where the drugs that we use aren't well received by the patient's system. And that seems to be the case here with cookie. It's not strong. Yeah, you can see the blood pumping free. It's kind of like, it's oh, colour's better. Yeah, but I think, I think we should get the antecedent into him anyway. Yeah. I just don't like this. Nathan and I are battling really hard to try and get Cookie to breathe again. 
and the worry is starting to rise in me. So I decide that we're going to pull out of the anaesthetic altogether. So we give him the reversal agent, which should mop up all the drugs that we knocked him out with in the first place. So you just need to keep stimulating. Come on. Can't feel anything, can you? No. It's a real battle to keep Cookie alive. We are breathing for him. We are trying to stimulate him to start breathing on his own. At the same time, listening very intently to his heart, which is beginning to slow. Come on, mate. Cookie has now been unresponsive for six minutes, despite Scott's use of numerous medications to try to stimulate the rabbit's system. Despite our best efforts, Cookie is simply not responding, and sadly, his heart stops. <sighs> After battling to save the little rabbit, Scott and Nathan are devastated. Uh, so our patient's passed away, which is uh, heartbreaking. Yeah, we fought valiantly as much as and as hard as we could, but he just seemed to react very badly to the drugs, and you never know that until you give a drug, and then you fight to counter the side effects. And we're incredibly shocked and upset that this has happened on our watch. We're trained to deal with these situations, but unfortunately, this one we didn't win, and Nathan and I are heartbroken. Next morning, Scott's practice manager, Maz, is on a special mission. Hello. Hello, love. You must be Babs. Oh, I'm Hi, Babs. Maz. Hello, Hello Maz. darling. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I've just got the world's smallest letter. <laughs> <laughs> Babs recently contacted the practice, asking for help to find her a new companion dog. I watch your program on TV. I wonder if you could find a small dog, as I lost my Timmy. He had a heart attack. I gave him the kiss of life oh. and rubbed his heart but could not get him back. I would pay all expenses if you could bring a small dog to me. Why do you miss having a dog around? What is it that you want the most about having a, another dog around? Well, for company and to love. Babs is living on her own. She's in a one-bed bungalow, but she's got this beautiful garden. What she can offer this dog is a very warm, safe environment. She's got her garden well secured. She's got friends around that are willing to walk the dog for her. So it's just the perfect situation. Yeah, I should spoil it rotten. Yes, I like bet I did, you will. Like I did, Timmy. Yeah, I bet. So you I will. hope you can do your best for I'm me. I'm going to do everything I can, Thanks. Babs. Okay, leave you it with me, and will I will. Do. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Lovely, All thank right. you. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> pleased, very grateful. Give us a kiss. Oh my! <laughs> you got lip on your mouth. Bye bye. Yeah, does it suit me? I don't use you, use it, but I, I thought I'd put some on for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boy. At the Richmond practice, Jack Russell Snugs and owners Amy and Ryan are here to see Scott about a worrying lump that's appeared on the dog's leg. Hi. Hello. Hello. You all right? Yeah, good. Here, Snuggy, who's this? Is. Vet nurse and family friend Reagan first pointed out the lump to Amy. God, he's so cute. Oh, he's a good boy. How's he been? Yeah, he's not bad. Just want to figure out what's going on with this little lump here. Yeah. Well, we'll have lots of cuddles and everything today. Hey. Yeah? Cool. So, do you want to just take a seat and Scott will come out and see you? Okay. Exactly. All right. Thank you. Lovely. Come see you in a bit. Go on, go, Daddy. Good boy. I met Amy and Ryan this year, and instantly me and Amy just clicked. She has this like 
vibe about her and I just love her personality and obviously love how much she also loves animals. Fetch a ball. Fetch it. Get a ball. Get Fetch a ball. it. Good boy. I think he's found all the balls you possibly have in the practice, so it's quite nice to see him quite relaxed and, yeah, he doesn't seem that stressed, which is nice. Well, someone seems like he's uh, taking advantage <laughs> of the amenities. Yeah, I think he's in dog heaven at the moment. Oh, <laughs> So this is Snugs? Yeah, Snugs, come on. Come here. Hello. Well, I think there's a ball stuck under yes. there. Yes. <laughs> He's looking very snugly in his jacket. Hello, Chan. He protects us all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then. Do you want to come on in? We have to get him away from those toys. Here, look, yeah. Snugs, what's this? Snugs, it's on. Come on. Ooh, come, on come on in. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's this? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, here we go. Good, Good boy. boy. Oh, yes. You're easily bought, aren't you? He's obviously here for a reason and not because of his uh, low energy levels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly not Because he's full of himself, isn't he? So what, what brings you here today? A couple of months ago, I was out walking and he looked like he'd stung his paw, is what it looked like, so he started limping on it. And then uh, Reagan and I noticed that there was an actual lump on the leg, so ah. obviously that's... But there's okay. no change in his behaviour or he doesn't okay. seem sort of overly concerned, just yeah. sometimes limps. Yeah, OK, well, it's quite handy to have a, a mate that's a vet now. Yes, so. yeah, really <laughs> handy. Yeah. All right, so let me just have a little feel of this, champ. Can I have a little feel of your leg? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. It's okay. Okay. Good boy. okay. It's all right. Good boy. Good boy. So it's this bony lump on the yes. inside of the right knee. Is yes. That, is that what That's you're concerned it, yeah. about? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good boy. It's all right. So he doesn't like me touching it, does he? Straight away, I can feel the lump that Reagan could feel. I give it even the slightest of presses and Snug's not happy. It goes around to potentially tell me off. But uh, it's clear that it's uncomfortable and it's painful. What I just want to do is just um, to flex and extend the legs. So if you just hold his head for me. Yeah, he's all right. Just want to see. Good boy. Shush, 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 shush. Right. He knows it's, it's serious so now. <laughs> yeah. Good boy. That lump is. A little concerning, I must yeah. be honest, because it does okay. feel like bone. Yeah. I think we can all agree. Yeah. And when you've got a lump of bone on one of the limbs, unfortunately, sometimes it can be some things that you don't want it to be, things like cancer, potentially. It's really difficult to sugarcoat my concerns because if it is bone cancer, then it really is a death sentence. <sighs> I'm sorry okay, to upset sorry. you. I know it's okay. It's all right. I, I know it's it's a shock, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's quite upsetting. So just trying to trying to keep it together for the moment, just to see actually wait and see and what what the what the issue is yeah, really. Don't have to worry just yet, but yeah. So fingers crossed. The type of tumours that a bony tumour right. can present as are generally quite painful indeed, and that pain ramps up quite quickly to right. the point where they, you know, they're very lame. Okay. First things first, we need to take some bloods to make okay. sure that he is running perfectly healthily. Yeah. Give him a sedation to be able to keep him still enough to take an X-ray. If it is a tumour, they yeah. have a very distinctive look on X-ray, yep. so it will be quite quick and quite easy to be able to say yes or no. Okay. Being a vet, it's about having a diagnostic list that you then shoot down. And in this instance, I'm racking my brains to try and think of anything else but bone cancer that this could be. And I'm coming up short because everything else would be presenting in a very different way. You're going to say goodbye to mummy and daddy. Hello, Keep your darling. chat. See you soon. There you go. Mm. Okay. Be good. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> yes, be good. Good boy, Snugs. See you in a bye bit. Bye. All right. Thank bye -bye. you very much. See you later. My pleasure. Bye, guys. Bye. Hi, love. Hello. All right. Yeah, you? Yeah, I'm okay. How did it go? You all right? Yeah, so. Uh, what did Scott say then? Uh, just going to take some blood tests and then hopefully do an x ray just to see what the lump is. Just try not to worry. And as soon as we get any results, call you back in and, and Scott will talk you through everything. All right. Great. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, well, we'll see All you right. later. Okay, darling. I'll see right. you in a bit. Bye. Oh, dear. It's all right. I don't know who's more worried, you or them. Hey. <laughs> At the Richmond practice, Scott and vet nurse Reagan are prepping 13-year-old Snugs for x-rays to find the cause of the lump on his right hind leg. We're concerned about the fact that not only this boy is an old boy, so this anaesthetic might be risky, 
but also we're sedating him thinking that we're going to be diagnosing something not very nice, so it's a bit of a sad moment. I'm now getting a better chance to assess it and you can just, just sort of see it visually, you know, it's not it is quite... something that we can kind of wish away anymore. It is there. Yeah. It did strike me as being in sort of an, I guess, unusual place rather than being directly on the knee or something like that. That's why I did feel it. It's definitely hard and bony. Does it feel like it's completely attached to? Yep. It does feel. Okay. Yep, as much as I don't want it to be. This is a really hard one to navigate because when you have a hard lump on a bone in an old dog, it doesn't take much to think, you know what, that might be bone cancer. The only thing I can come up with is potential trauma, that there's a swelling there, but there's no history to back that up. Okay. All right. X-ray. If Snug's leg bone appears pitted or pockmarked on the X-ray, it will confirm Scott's fears that the little dog has bone cancer. Okay. Not quite what I was expecting. Looking at these x-rays, I feel pretty confident that it isn't bone cancer, which is fantastic. There really doesn't seem to be the classic kind of coral-like appearance to the bone. It all looks pretty good, but it's still a little bit of a question mark as to what the slump is, but it's not associated with the bone, so I'll take that. It's good. <laughs> While Snugs is still fully anaesthetised, Scott now wants to recheck his range of movement to hopefully shed some new light on the mysterious lump. Bending and flexing, extending, moving all of the joints around and just doing some assessments that Snugs would allow me to do in the consult room. It's weighing up everything. It's certainly not something that you want to jump into a diagnosis because it's serious if I get it wrong. Hmm. Okay. Right. So that's, that's, uh, I don't think I've ever smiled whilst diagnosing that before. What does he have? He has a mild cruciate rupture. I'm so happy. Oh my <laughs> God. I cannot wait for you to tell Amy. I think she's just gonna, mm. she's gonna be so happy. It's very good news. Yeah, very good, but I just needed some time to make sure. Okay. <laughs> so uh, maybe, uh, maybe I'm an old dog as well and my cogs are turning slower than they used to. I don't know. <laughs> Eureka, I find that the stifle, the knee, has some instability, which would suggest that Snugs may have a cruciate ligament rupture, and that then all explains why he's also got a lump. Hi, guys. Hi. All right. Your anxious wait is over. Yeah. Come down and see your guy. Thank you. Ta-da! Oh, baby! It's your baby! Good boy. Here you go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, look, we're matching snugs. <laughs> <laughs> I chose it just for you. Oh. <laughs> You're a bit sleepy. Good boy. Thank you. Okay, Good so boy. I know that you guys are desperately worried and anxious yeah. about what I'm about to say. So uh, I'm going to um, make it very easy for you that the news is good. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good, good. good. Told you. <laughs> but it was a little bit of a complicated web that we needed okay. to unwind. Okay. Okay, because up until this point, you thought that the lump caused the limp. Yeah. Right. But in fact, it's the limp that's caused okay. the lump. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to show you the x-rays. Let's just right. go and have a little look here. So there's the kneecap. Okay, there's his femur and there's a tibia and fibula. The lump is on the side of his knee, as we all could feel, and is still there. So what, in fact, your dog has is a potentially partially or completely ruptured cruciate ligament. Right. Okay. So that's an important ligament in the knee that, that basically stabilises the stifle, the knee joint. And what's happened over a period of time is that the body has naturally tried to stabilise it by bridging the gap, and it's bridged it by producing this thick bit of okay. tissue okay. here. That tissue has developed over this, which is a normal part of the bone, okay. and that's why we could feel that prominent lump. Right. But rather than thinking that the lump was causing the limp, actually, the lump has helped to probably make the limp a little better. Okay. Right. But because you, as loving doting owners, didn't realise that he had a knee injury, right. you've kept exercising him, and so right. it hasn't had the chance to heal. To rest okay. Properly. Yeah. So from bone cancer to cruciate ligament is a long way yeah, away from each other. Sort of yeah. Good boy. 
My treatment plan for snugs moving forward is restricted exercise, rest and anti-inflammatories. Worst case scenario, if it gets worse, if he starts being more lame, we can have him back in and perform surgery. Good boy. And it just means that he maybe needs to behave a little bit more like the old timer that he is. <laughs> right. <Tell> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. More sort of casual walks in the park okay. um, and naps rather than really long, energetic walks. All right. Bye bye, right, Chan. Take you home. Bye bye, yeah. buddy. Lovely. Thank you very much. All care. right. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye. See you no worries. Later. Thank you so much for looking oh, after right. I'm yeah, so baby. glad Thank it all. you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So much. I suppose today is a real good example of our job. It's sometimes not clear cut, it's not easy. You have to work with people's emotions at the same time as use your brain and understand what's going on with an animal that can't tell you what's wrong with them. So to put all of those things together is really the definition of our job. I'm just really glad that I got a good result. Owner's happy, dog's happy, so am I. Mazzy's search for a new dog for elderly Babs has taken her north to Nottinghamshire after a call from a local rescue centre. I'm on my way to meet them now and hopefully they're going to have the right dog for Babs. Maz is heading to the Jerry Green Rescue Centre. Hi, Molly! Are we ready to go? Are we ready? Where manager Sapphire has lined up a very special little rescue dog that's in need of a new home. They actually think they've got the right dog with all of Babs's requirements, everything she wanted, so this might be it. This might be the absolute cherry on the cake. Fingers crossed, everything goes well. Hi, baby. Hello, it's Molly. Hi, Molly. Hello, beautiful. Oh, sweetheart. Hello. Oh, my gosh, she's beautiful. She really is, isn't she? Hello, sweetheart. Hello, hi. She's very kissy. Are you very... Are you all about the kisses? Are you... Oh, yes. Oh, lovely. Thank you. I'll give you a kiss, too. Molly is eight and a half, so she's not a young puppy. She's not going to take too much maintenance. So she lived with a lady before on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Right. Um, but sadly lost her owner. But it's nice that we found a similar setup for her. So it's going to be like home for Molly. She's going to yeah. understand that. Yes, you, oh, you are. Oh, you are. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit over in love with her, but I've got to remember that it's Babs who is going to love her more than anything in the world, and uh, I'd be willing to let her go to Babs. So obviously we think that she's the ideal dog for Babs, so what's the what's the next step then? So the next stage for us would be to take her over to meet Babs, okay. and just see if there is that connection there, Okay. and um, see how Molly um, greets Babs and yeah. the same um, and just see what the property is like, make sure it is suitable, show yeah. Molly the garden, right. make sure that it's all secure um, and hopefully we'll see a really nice connection with Babs and Molly. No time like the present then? Yeah, shall we go? Let's do it. Yeah, come Can on then me? Molly. Come Good on. girl. Heal. Heal. In Isleworth, Scott's next patient is four-month-old energetic Weimaraner pup, Whiskey. Come on. We wanted a dog with a big personality, so that's how we decided on getting Whiskey. Woo! <laughs> he needs four walks a day at least, so he's running my life really now. It's complete unconditional love, you know. <laughs> what more could he want? He's very loyal, very affectionate. He sits on me all the time. He's now a bit too big to sit on me, but he still tries to. He still thinks he's about half the size he really is. And he hardly looks like a puppy anymore, but he really is mentally, definitely. But recently, Whiskey's owner Fergus has noticed something wrong with the young pup's eye. In his left eyelid has swollen and isn't closing properly. And his left eye has, gets a lot of uh, gunk on it. So we, after about a month of this, we thought he's gonna have to have it operated. So Fergus and Whiskey are heading in to see Scott to find out if anything can be done. Hello, 
Hello, mate. Hello, handsome. How are you? How are you? Oh, wow. He's, he's, he's fruity. He's <laughs> morning, aren't you? Wow. That's, um, that's a little bit forward, first date and all, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Come on in the consult room, Fergus. OK. In you come. Come on, Whiskey. Good boy. Give that tongue to yourself. Weimaraner puppies are just gorgeous. They have those beautiful blue-green eyes with little flecks of hazel in them, the beautiful velvety floppy ears that could get caught in a breeze and blow them away. They're just so lovely and they're really sweet natured dogs as well. So at the moment what I can see is a very red inflamed eye and quite a bit of sort of gunky muck coming out of it, is that pretty much an everyday occurrence for yeah, him? Yeah, And sometimes does it look actually a lot worse? Sometimes it looks worse, yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. He, when he wakes up, it's completely shut. Glued shut, yeah. is it? Oh, that's no good. So what he has is something called cherry eye. Yeah. The third eyelid, which is the one that comes across the eye, kind of like sort of the curtains at a movie theatre, those ones flick across to kind of protect the eye if they say get a scratch from a cat, for example. Mm -hmm. And within that third eyelid, lives a gland that can sometimes get inflamed. And when it gets inflamed, it prolapses out. And that then gets irritated and inflamed. And because it's irritated and inflamed, it's bigger, so then it stays out. So we're just gonna stain your eye and just see if your tear duct is working. Is that all right? All right, let's just pop these drops in. So this is a, a dye uh, and it uh, stains any damaged tissue on the eye. But what it'll also do is pass through the nasolacrimal duct, so uh, basically the tear duct, so from the eye to the nose. That's kind of why when you cry, your nose runs as well. So we're gonna just see if the eye's okay, but also if that tear duct is patent or open. Good boy. Oh, that's it, now don't rub that, rub that on daddy's jumper. Good boy. You got any green snot, mate? Any green snot? So there's no fluorescent green snot, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. which uh, sounds like it should be a good thing. But what it means is that that duct just isn't open, yeah. which would again explain why he's getting all this discharge from his yeah. eye, because tears not only lubricate the eye, but also wash it out. So if they're not allowed to drain, they can accumulate in the eye, and they're a perfect environment for bacteria to grow. So that's why he's got that yucky looking eye. So what we need to do is perform a procedure where we almost make a little hammock for the gland, we just sort of tuck it in nicely into that third eyelid with a couple of sutures. And what that does is just hopefully avoids it from being able to pop out in future. All the inflammation simmers down and we should get a good result. We're gonna also flush the tear ducts. Clearly it's blocked at the moment. And hopefully once that third eyelid is less inflamed, we should get the result we're looking for. Love you daddy, don't you? But it's time for you to say farewell, for now at least. And okay. uh, I'll give you a call once he's woken up. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, my pleasure. Be good. Be good boy. Good boy. See you later, Fergus. See you later. Take care. Say bye. It's very obvious, by the way, that Fergus is looking at Whiskey that he is absolutely besotted by his floppy-eared friend. They have a very close bond and clearly it's upsetting when you have to perform surgery on such a young puppy. But we need to, to fix this eye so we can move forward comfortably. Hey, someone loves his daddy. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. And he is just a baby, a big, very long baby. Whiskey is now allowed to recover and he seems to be very comfortable. Well, you wouldn't think so. He's wailing away like a baby. It's not that he's painful, it's just that he's feeling a bit weird recovering from his anesthetic. Oh. Okay. okay, it's the kind of shame, mate. Oh. I know, I know. It's awful, not isn't that. it? Here we go. He is in. Got it. Got it. Okay, insult to injury, hey? <laughs> All right, come on, big boy. Here we go. Oh, come on, you big baby. Whiskey will rest for the next few hours until his sedation has worn off and his owner, Fergus, can come and take him home. There you go. All right, sleep it off and I'll call Daddy. In Nottingham, it's time for rescue dog Molly to meet her new owner. Should we see if they want to come in then? Oh no, they're not here already. Yeah. Oh yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, oh, darling. <laughs> Mass has been helping 88-year-old Babs to find a new companion dog. She's all yours. 
Oh, it's good. <laughs> Babs has an awful lot to offer a dog. She has compassion. She has so much love that she is ready and willing and able to give to a dog. But most importantly, she's got time, which a lot of people younger actually can't always offer on that 24-hour basis. Come on in, Sapphire. Hello, my baby. Hello, <laughs> Sapphire. Hi. Hello, darling. Hello, sweetie. What do you reckon? Hello, good kiss. Good kiss, and we should rub me. Good kiss, good kiss. Is it lovely? Is it lovely? Yeah. Good yeah. girl, yeah. Lovely surprise. I knew they were looking for a dog for me, but I didn't know she'd actually got one. Oh, it was lovely. Oh. So this is Molly. Hello, Molly. <laughs> Lovely, isn't she? What do you reckon? She's cold. She wants to warm me down. I think she wants lots of cuddles, does she? Lots of cuddles, lots of cuddles. <laughs> mm. Lots of cuddles. Yes, I know all about it. Yes. Yes. Oh, she's certainly taken to you. Yes, yes. Yeah, Gorgeous. I think it's mutual, isn't it? Yeah. I think that feeling's mutual. Yes, yes. she's lovely and I'm ever so grateful. Really am. Really am. Yeah, thank baby. you for giving her a good home. It's the best bit about the job. It's the bit that where we can do the actual match and it enriches not only the dog's life but the adopter's life as well. So it's really, really nice just to see that affection between them and know that Molly's got a really good home for the future. Yes. Yes, you're going to be my baby, aren't you? Honey? Isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? At Scott's Isleworth Clinic, Fergus is back to collect eye surgery patient whiskey. It's been a very quiet afternoon, a bit nerve-wracking. Uh, just waiting for the phone call to say he's OK. Hello, sir. Hello. Here's your boy. Hey, whiskey. Hey, whiskey. So everything went really well. Good. He's a very good boy. That gland is tucked back nicely into that third eyelid and uh, his tear duct was blocked. Now we've flushed that, and I'm hopeful that it all should resolve beautifully. Great, thank you. Yeah. We need to have stitches taken out. Thankfully not. You might see sort of this bright purple eyelash that looks like it's coming flying out of his eye. It's absolutely fine. It will pop out and break down in about a month's time. But by that stage, it would have done its work and that uh, third eyelid will uh, be back to normal. And I can feed him straight away? You can, absolutely you can. I'm sure he'd be very keen. Uh, okay, well, I think it's time for your boy to head back to your place. There you go. Oh, thank you. All right, come on then, mate. You're gonna have to wake up to go home. Come on, whiskey. Go on then. Good boy. Oh, Thanks right. very much. My pleasure. <laughs> My pleasure. Yes, that's what the collar's on for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Take care, Fergus. On, See you later, whiskey. Happy you come. Be a good boy. Come on, mate. There's the door. Spatial awareness is quite difficult when you've got a collar yeah. on. <laughs> Bye, Fergus. Bye, okay, Take care. thank All you. All the best. Bye, whiskey. Lovely boy. So how are the babies getting on? They're doing really well. Growing like there's no tomorrow, so yeah. yeah, have a look and see what you reckon. Six weeks later, Scott is back at Mudchute Farm. Tom wants him to check up on some of Cookie's offspring. We've got three that we've decided to keep. Oh, great. Um, so they're going to be staying on the farm, so those are the ones that we'll have a look at now. Nice. Right, here they are. Oh, my goodness. They are gorgeous. Yeah, we'll go in and have a closer look. Oh, look at that. That one's literally a mirror image of its dad. It certainly is. Oh, my goodness, like a mini cookie. And just as feisty. That's it, exactly. Oh, hello, beautiful. Oh, my goodness, these rabbits are so cute. They are absolutely beautiful. And one of them is the absolute picture of Cookie. Oh, wow. What an amazing legacy. I know, Cookie. don't they? They're lovely. Do we know if they're boys or girls yet? I haven't had a look yet, because I think they're still a little bit too young, but maybe you can have a look and see. Should I have another look? So I'm pretty sure that this guy is following after his dad's footsteps. Hey, chip off the old block. 
Nice, we have. So that one's a female. Yep. And then last but not least, let's have a look at you. Mm -hmm. I think this one's also a girl. Mm -hmm. The examination of the babies went really well, and we've found out we've got one boy and two girls. The three babies will stay here for the rest of their natural lives, so they'll be in a happy, functioning social group, providing happiness to many, many children and adults that come and visit the farm. Have you thought of names yet? Well, because obviously Dad was called Cookie, we were thinking about biscuits. Biscuit-inspired names. That's it, yes. Okay. Well, one biscuit that I desperately miss from home is this chocolate extravaganza, which is a Tim Tam. So I wonder if maybe, do you want to be Tim Tam? They're really nice, really <laughs> nice. And then what about you? What's your favorite biscuit? Well, I like chocolate digestives. Okay, but so that... maybe we should go with the brown one on that one. Yep, yep. All right, and then I think the English biscuit that I think is amazing is a hobnob. Everyone loves a hobnob, come on. So we can call this little one here. There we go. It's bittersweet visiting Mudsheet Farm today. On one hand, I'm heartbroken at not returning with Cookie, but happy to check on his lasting legacy, his babies. As a vet, we're trained to accept that sometimes complications happen, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt. But life goes on, and it's great to see that this Randy Rabbit's offspring are happy and healthy, and continuing to delight the urban kids who love this special place. Nice one, Tim Tim. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll go and get a cup of tea and toast your health. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.